bottom lane, it used to be a big point for Curse, a big point of weakness for Curse, where most of the teams would actually criticize the bottom lane most. But now we're seeing such good results, having brought in their all-star Edward, that teams have to notice it. Also, if Curse do pick up a victory, yeah, this will be their first perfect week, going 3-0, you know, clearing out without a loss. So we'll see if they can secure that. We are into pick some bans, and Sona, Zed, Jarvan, and Zack have been taken off the pool. So Saint is going to have to play a different jungle, and Void Boy is going to have to play a different top laner. Yeah, so we aren't going to see the same combo we saw in the last game, where they had the Shockwave setting up all of those AoE moves. But Curse do have a very deep, uh, deep champion pool, and they have very different strategies that they like to use. They, they go all over the place. They won't use even the same strategy from one game to the next. Like someone like CLG or something, you can usually think that they'll their go-to strategy is a split push comp. Curse don't really have that go-to single strategy. And we'll see what they decide to wrap around the Shen. They've already got the ability to split push if they want to, mm -hmm. and that global threat is something that'll definitely play into their favor. Dignitas now taking their time, thinking about what they want to go with. We've been seeing Crumbs play a lot of um, uh, Nocturne, yeah. but he's locked in Lee this time. So with those two lock-ins, Twisted Fate and Shen are available, and we've heard so many teams talk about how Vulcan especially very outspoken about nobody should lose when they have Shen and Twisted Fate. But uh, Jackie's Twisted Fate, not his uh, really go-to champion there. So maybe during your toss are feeling like they can actually just leave that one up for a little bit and, and Curse will pass over it. I wonder what the talk must be like in the comp you know, in, in the comms for the team right now, mm -hmm. discussing, well, these are the champions that are open. They could even go something like locking in the Nami and the Twitch, get that bottom lane. Yeah, just been, get it early. Get, you know, that has been working for them, allow them maybe counter pick something from Dig. And I guess with all the options on the table, it's the reason Curse is taking all of this time. They're definitely discussing the first pick Fiddle too, because that first picking a Fiddle means that it's core to their team strategy right now. And Fiddle can go actually a lot of different places. So they're really wondering what is up Dignitas' sleeve right now, because it could be even that jungle or a middle solo lane Fiddlesticks. We'll have to see what does get locked in, because at the time being, they're hovering over something very different. <laughs> Curse, however, they did lock in their duo lane. They yeah. did lock in their AD carry and support. And actually, we're going to see Edward going back to Thresh, something that he was famous for in EU. Hasn't necessarily had the same level of impact here in NA, though. Yeah, we have seen a couple of teams try and use those mind games, though, where a star player will start playing a totally different champion over and over and over to make you forget about his main and banning that one out. So now he's returned to that uh, famous Thresh that he loves to play. Bravely, we're going to see Kiwi Kid rocking out the Aatrox again. Second and time's a charm. Second, well, I, I always <laughs> heard it was third, personally. <laughs> They're hoping it's second time the charm. <laughs> All the Dignitas fans are like, second time, let's just skip that one. In terms of the matchup, we're, we're currently seeing it probably going to be an Aatrox versus a Shen, so that might be a slightly easier lane if they go head-to-head. -head. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll have to see if either of these teams decide to do any of these swap arounds and 2v2s. And for the time being, Curse, once again, thinking about this Oriana. The thing about Aatrox is he actually does have a difficult time in 2 versus one Lanes. So I think that the early game and the ward, the invasions with where the wards are placed will be really beneficial to Curse. If they can figure out where Dingtoss lanes are going to be going beforehand, then they can set it up in their favor. Aatrox having to cast his spells and have them cost health to use means that he can get harassed down very easily, especially with a dangerous duo lane that has a death sentence there waiting for you. If something like that does land, they can pop his passive the first time around and then finish him off the second. There's going to be very scary lanes for uh, Kiwi Kid to handle and control. Over for Curse, the Orianna and the Zin Zhao have been locked in, so that ball delivery system of either Shen or Zin Zhao with Orianna ball on top, it'll be a similar role to what we've been seeing out of the Jarvan and the Zac but arguably less damage, more maybe utility even. Mm -hmm. Zin can knock people away, Shen can shield and save people. Yeah, so we've got both opposite ultimates really here. So Shockwave here from Jackie will pull everyone in, and then the ultimate from Saint could knock everyone <laughs> away. And we'll see if they actually can coordinate those to, for some really beautiful replays that I'm sure Jad would pick up. <laughs> but another thing that I also want to call out, we've seen so many times, um, especially over in Korea where we have an Evelyn Shen combo and it's an invisible uh, Stan United that comes in, you can do a similar thing with Twitch because he can use that ambush to come in invisible and basically hunt down people that are split pushing side lanes. You don't want to do this in a team fight, but split pushing side lanes and catching someone off with, with that combo is definitely very effective too. It's something we've actually seen Cop doing as well. He stealths up, moves up to his targets and tries to assassinate them. So in conjunction with a Stand United, it'll work out perfectly. For Dignitas, they were hovering over a lot of different champions, but decided <laughs> to lock in that Cassidy. Scarl hoping to repeat his 
very good performances that we've seen on Castellan over the last week or so. So the thing about Dignitas lineup that obviously just jumps out at you are the jumps. Every single <laughs> champion here has a jump. Fiddle Six is going to have to use his ultimate, but everybody else is going to be so slippery and hard to lock down. I love that their composition is going to be very interesting to watch in the team fights because all of them can go in and out. It's going to make my life and, difficult. And having, especially their solo laners, are both on sort of uh, all in and uh, uh, assassins like that. It'll, it'll be. Uh, a good show. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to the team fight phase in this matchup. We are loaded up into the game. Just to remind everybody once again, it is of course Curse taking on Dignitas. This is our fourth match of the day. And uh, Dignitas right now sitting eight wins and 11 losses. If they lose this game now, they're one game away from seventh position in Coast. That is how far down Dignitas is currently falling. Whereas, if Curse pick up a victory, they'll be tied at 10 and 10 with TSM. Yeah, it's, it's getting really tense. We're, we're so close to playoffs now. And this split, coming after playoffs, is Worlds. So everybody is really, really feeling the, the pressure now. And it's crunch time. So uh, they want to get their strategies down as soon as possible so they can make it to that all-important Worlds. And it's definitely the only interviews we've been talking to the players about. Just saying they want to get playoffs. Playoffs is step number one. Then focusing on those series games. So mm -hmm. obviously make it into world playoffs. Curse versus Dignitas. Curse grouped up as a five-man. Starting to move through the jungle and the look or the appearance of a defensive starcher from Dignitas. It looks like they just want to cover the entry to their jungle and not invade anywhere recklessly. Yeah, they not only in their posture here look defensive, but also in the items. We've had both solo laners start with those Doran shields to mitigate the early auto attack harass. That is going to be the biggest problem for both of these guys because everyone always brings it up. Kassen is a beast late game, but Kassen has a very hard laning phase that other teams can punish. And that's why he's a, a fairly rare pick in competitive play. The question is whether or not St. Vicious can help out Nijaki and make that early game of Kassen more difficult for Skara. One minute, 10 on the clock, and both of these teams have basically just defended their own jungle. Very defensive, shallow wards mm -hmm. for both respective team, and a little bit against the trend, because we have been seeing very early, very deep wards from many of the NALCS teams. It's surprising to me that Curse aren't the ones uh, initiating this. I mean, it's no surprise that Dignitas are playing defensive and warding up like that, but with the death sentence available on Curse and the importance of the deep wards to find the lanes that they want, Interesting choice that they actually went for setting up a trap instead. They wanted to get some, some somebody off guard and, crat and catch a first blood. Well, nevertheless, it has been a slow start. We'll see how these lanes match up. For the time being, it does appear as though Dignitas have actually voluntarily put Kiwi Kid into the 1v2 lane. You can see Patoy and I'm a cutie pie actually on the top half of the map. So. A little bit unexpected from the Dignitas well, team. Well, it's all because of the lack of vision. It's mind games. They have no idea where the lanes are. So this is this is all sort of a just the roll of the dice. Roll the and dice. They, they are going to get the full steal away, though. The blue buff. That is not seen by Curse. So St. Vicious is actually going to waste some time by going over to his blue side well, instead of countering. Well played by them making use of the drain on Fiddlesticks. Just holding him in place, tanking up the Golem, and basically regenerating any of the damage that is, is dealt to him. So. Well played to deny that experience and that buff from their opponent. Crumbs secured his blue buff and now has moved over to his red buff. And we might be seeing some, some lane pressure from Lee Sin, level 3 or 4 with those double buffs. Yeah, both of these champions, Lee Sin and Jin Zhao, would love to get off the early ganks. And it's just going to be too bad for Saint that he's very far behind because of missing out on a buff worth of experience. So we do see that uh, Crumbs is moving his way into this mid lane. Scar has been forced incredibly low by Nijaki's auto attacks. That clockwork wind-up passive of Oriana does so much work in the early game. Kramps is going to move his way into lane. Flash is available. Going to sidestep and doesn't manage to get away from the Sonic Wave. Just some harass being put down by Kramps. And he gets away, probably trading relatively evenly at the end of it all. And that was all set up by a very nice ward that Scar had in the side of the River Porpoise ward. Scar put it down early so he could see that Jackie didn't have a ward on that side. And Crumps was able to use it to jump to using the safeguard. Well played, making use of all of the tools in their inventory. 
We do see... Oh, they're going back at Jackie. So we'll see how this works out. Jackie now does have his flash available. We'll see if he can respect it. Does manage to land it. But flash burned, and he used his ignite earlier in the lane. So no summoner spells for that, no, Jackie. And they do see this Lee Sin going up towards the top. So St. Vicious and Voiboy should definitely be backing off here. And almost on cue they are. Managed to get away safely. They do have... Uh, their opponents have got full vision in the river. So... They'll be well aware if St. Vicious or Voidboy are moving around, and thanks to that dark wind, St. Vicious' position has been given away. So both of these lanes, uh, junglers trying to find opportunities, but St. Vicious is really babysitting that top lane extensively. And it seems like this is going to be one of the better games for the Skara Kassadin, because his very early game got shored up by repeated ganks from Crumbs. They just had the jungler camp the mid lane there, and Skara's getting closer and closer to that very important level six. We'll see how quickly he can do. He's sitting only six CS behind his opponent. So one wave that's been missed thanks to all of the pressure he's been under as well as the fact that he's that melee champion. Kram's still looking to, to find a way in, find an opportunity. Moved his way to the top lane, just took the golems and is now backing for his first time to the shop. And basically the, the main difference between those two sides, solo lanes, is that because Saint had his second buff stolen away, he just went into lane, and he was basically laning with Voiboy. So Voiboy's CS a bit higher there than Kiwi Kids. Plus that aforementioned difficulty that Aatrox has in two versus one lanes. We'll see how well Kiwi Kid can do on that Aatrox. He gave up first blood in his first time playing the champion. And uh, at the moment, sitting a wave and a half behind, he's going to try to use those Blades of Torment that triangle-shaped E to farm up a little bit from from range, but of course it costs health, so it makes his life even more difficult staying healthy and sustained in lane. And the, a small point on Twitch, when you're trying to shove down those early turrets, because Cop's going for the harass on Kiwi Kid, the poison ticks stay there. And now we have action again in mid, no flash for Jack. The knockup does land into crumbs as he tries to safeguard away, does manage to flash out though, but summon a spell burned and that was a great counter game by St. Vicious. Yep, good job being in the right place at the right time. And now we see most of the wards for this cursed team are centered around the mid lane. And that's because of all the camping that Crumbs has done there and the vulnerability that Jackie has after burning that flash. So a good reactive play by Curse to at least realize what they need to do to keep control of that position. In terms of the lanes, you can see that thanks to all the time St. Vicious spent up top, Voiboy's tower has been unpressured, whereas I'm a cutie by and, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Kiwi Kid's tower is dropped to below half health. If Coppin would keep this up, they could secure the first tower of the game. They definitely are going to look to push this next one. They also have harassed Kiwi Kid down to the point where he's out of potions. So they could either first harass him and then they take the turret after they force him back, or they could just bully down this one and go for the turret damage. We'll have to see what they decide to do in, in contrast to the TSM Cloud9 game. But we had four tower kills in the space of five minutes. It's a very different style of play. It does look like Edward and Cop have applied their focus to this tower. A couple more auto attacks and they should be able to get on this wave. Yeah, Kiwi Kid can't get into range to wave clear any of those caster minions. So there wasn't a whole lot that he could do without risking his own life. We're looking at Skara right now. He's been given some time to farm up this mid lane uncontested. Nijak, he did back away, and he's sitting actually ahead of his lane opponents, and that's a great position to be in. His cutie pie does get taunted up. The fear throws St. Fish's back, but he flashes forward. The third talent strike's not going to be able to throw him up in the air, but summon a spell blown as well as barrier fire and cutie pie. Pretty good job to get that one off of Cutie Pie. It is a win for the team, but Saint had to blow his flash as well. And since Shin Sao is a very early game oriented jungler, not being able to have that extra flash for the, the ganks is going to hurt his threat from the jungle. We'll see how well he can work around that as he just continues to farm up. He's back away. Spend a little bit of money. Nijaki gets caught out. Sonic Wave lands. Skara is six. He Riftworks forward. Got the Null Sphere up in just a second. The Shockwave goes down. Now Stand United is coming up from Void Boy. Cop is here as well. The Lantern goes backwards, but Cop does not manage to get in range to land in those auto attacks. And all of a sudden, Curse have a four man stack. It was a really good gank there by Dingtoss, though. They forced out the Stand United as soon as it became available to Void Boy. So now, Curse, they don't have that ability to force a Dragon fight with the potential of bringing in a Stand United Shen and, and gaining that split push advantage. So now that advantage just handed over to Dignitas. So advantage for them, and we'll see if they make use of it. They've got the pink ward down, starting to deny the vision. And 
I don't know if they've actually finished out that ward. Nope. It does look like Curse is actually starting to respond. Nijak, does not have Shockwave available. Say it's a very important steal. build. Yeah, comes St. Vicious. Now Crumbs does get pulled backwards. He uh, doesn't manage to take it as Crumbs secures it with a smite. First kill is St. Vicious going down. First blood picked up by Army Cutie Pie. Kiwi Kid dives forward. The blood well gets popped and he starts reviving himself. Blades of Torment goes down. Cop is forced on the retreat. Dignitas get the dragon and first blood. That was a very early smite by St. Vicious, and Crumbs was not rushed there. He held on to his and then was able to finish it off cleanly. Huge win for Dignitas, and we have to give credit to the earlier gank that they just pulled off middle, which was the Scar and Crumbs combo, which that burned Stand United for that whole fight that just transpired. It's a whole series of events that played into their favor, and they took advantage of it. That's the key thing. And of course, thanks to the second blue buff steal now, I'm a cutie pie. He's had a blue buff for majority of this early game. He has that tier of the goddess completed, and that's going to help him stack it up so much quicker. Yeah, and it will be interesting to see if we have the tier of the goddess from Cassidy upgraded into Seraph's Embrace before the Rod of Ages in this game, because with the changes to tier, it, it stacks so much slower. The estimate is around 10 minutes slower. But if you upgrade it into the Archangels, then it's back. You get the reward of the very quick stacking there, and it's back to back to the old way that it used to be. Once they farm up a little bit more gold, we'll see how they decide to itemize. The Scarra is looking pretty comfortable right now. Zero zero one. He's only seven CS behind Nijaki's Orion, and I guess the the composition and the focus of mid lane by Krams worked in their favor. Scarra, he takes a little bit of time to get going on Kassim, but once he does, there's some very squishy targets and curse that he has the opportunity to blow up in team fights. Exactly. This game is going very well for Dignitas right now. They have the threat of the roaming Kassadin who not only does he already have his tier and get that one stacking, but he's got the blue buff control on his side and his teleport still available. So if any sort of action comes in either of the side lanes, you have to worry about a teleporting in Mage Assassin. And Skara, and the threat of him snowballing is really the biggest thing on Curse's mind right now. Curse is going to have to try and maintain that snowball, prevent it from becoming an avalanche or similar. We noticed that Cop and Edward are spending a fair amount of time in that mid lane. And has finally decided to move down to this bottom lane. And he's going to continue trying to farm up as best as possible. Attack and dissonance onto Crumbs. Just going to scare him away. As we see Void Boy's caught a little bit out of position. Does get feared, does get silenced. True Shot Barrage goes down from Cutie Pie. He's going to be trying to get away as quickly as he can. Ignite is ticking. He's ghosted up to get out of range. Another Mystic Shot gets blocked by the Fate, but Crumbs has now come to party. Red Buff is on. Dragon's Red Chicks throws him in the air. Sonic Wave, Resonate Strike, lands the kill. Now they end up with three members in the top lane, so they can continue to push down on this turret. And Curse are going to be hard pressed to defend that one. They've actually made the decision to keep Cop in the bottom lane and have their Twitch solo farming as well as putting the pressure back on to uh, Kiwi Kid. So three of them now bashing away on this tower. Stand United is available, so Void Boy will be up in about a second's time. We'll see if they decide to let St. Vicious engage and throw that ability down. It didn't work out for them the last time they used it. And instead, Dignitas are actually going to back away from that top lane tower, deciding against it as they were fairly low on life. And because Curse just saw all of them with such low HP, they make the good call to turn the tides and go with this cannon minion to try and get the all-important mid-turret. So the shield is now on both Cop and Edward. They're putting a lot of damage down with Nijaki, Edward, and Cop hammering away. They secure the second tower of the game. And they even up. They're down two kills, but they're up two towers, and that puts them only 200 gold behind. That was perfect minion timing there by Curse. They made their push with the all-important cannon minion, and there was nothing that Scar could do on Cassidy. The one thing that Cassidy can't do at this stage in the game is wave clear. He doesn't have any ability power stacked up at all, so it'll take a little bit of time before he's got that. St. Vicious has stood around a corner here, maybe trying to make something happen against Scar, but he's in full vision of his <laughs> opponents as he stood right next to that ward. Yeah, we actually had a, a mirror set up there. Crumbs was on the exact other side. Uh, and nobody decides to be the initiator of that fight. We do see that in a minute and a half time, Dragon will be respawning. So both of these teams are going to start putting their thoughts towards that, starting to think, when do we need to move? What do we need to buy before we start to look to contest that if they want to do that the moment it spawns?
as we get later into the game too, and we, we start worrying about objectives like that dragon that will be popping up, you have to start wondering who is going to be the Dignitas champion that goes to stop Boy Boy from split pushing. And right now, it is going to be Skara. Even though he's on Cassidy and that doesn't have the greatest wave killer right now, once he ramps up with the ability power and the levels into his Force Pulse, he will not only be able to clear those waves, but he'll also be able to silence Boy Boy and Riftwalk away for the teleport. We'll see as and when that split pushing power comes into effect as it stands. Cutie Pie is at least containing Boy Boy. Hasn't really let him get too far ahead. He's 12 CS ahead of Kiwi Kid. This is definitely a better start to the matchup uh, for Kiwi Kid. He's also got a different build. In the previous matchup, he went. Zephyr Ninja Tab if I remember correctly, but it looks like he's going for Blade. And the reason that Kiwi Kid has the confidence to catch up and push in this bottom lane right now, so far without wards, is because Crumbs was doing a good job of invading that red side jungle, so he was acting as a human ward. But now, since Crumbs has uh, rotated over to contest the, the blue side, it's going to mean that Kiwi Kid has to back out or face a three-man gank. It does look like he's going to be running straight oh, into his opponents. He's going to have long. a dark flight in just a second. Does hop over the wall, gets out safely, and for the third time this game, Blue Buff taken away from Dignitas. They're signaling control of that buff. Great job there by Crumbs timing the blue buff, but it opens up the bottom side of the map where Curse actually go for the slightly higher priority objective here in Dragon. Well, with Dragon being secured, Dignitas now have positional advantage on the mid lane tower. They've got four hmm. of their members stacked up and Kiwi Kids taking maybe an extended route down this lane, but it does look like they are the ones that now want to take advantage of their position. Well, it was an interesting choice there by Dignitas. Instead of running to, the, to defend their own blue from the invade from Curse, they put the threat of taking middle turret, which forced Curse back to defend that middle turret instead of going from Dragon straight to the blue buff. So that that, that move by Dignitas effectively defended their blue buff. It's going to allow Scar to secure that one. It does look like he's moving his way into that position right now. You can see both Leeson and Fiddle hanging around the area. Now Jackie, let's get a bit of damage down into Scar, but those Force Pulses are already starting to hurt. They're just bashing back and forth, trading amongst themselves. For the time being, Nijaki, not really an insta-give potential without any major items completed. So the way that this lane works out uh, for Jackie is that when when you rush that Chalice of the Harmony, uh, Chalice of Harmony that you're trying to turn into an Athene's Unholy Grail, it gives you some very good early magic resistance to resist the harass of that Cassidin. And also, Orianna gains even more when she has the ball on her. So if you are always shielding yourself when Scar comes in for the trade, then he'll be able to come out ahead. Now this is a sneaky teleport up here from Scar. He's actually getting in position without anyone on Curse knowing. We've entered the sneaky voice right now. Scar <laughs> teleports to the tri-bush. I think he knows Edward is there. Kiwi Kid is around. If Edward steps out, Scar is going to think about this one. Decides against it right now, but he's still sticking around. He's being very patient with setting up this gank. And you can tell that Kiwi Kid actually getting a little anxious. And that was the reason that Edward just threw out that lantern to check the bush, because they're wondering, why is Kiwi Kid being, getting so anxious here? Why is he solo pushing this lane? There, Something must be up. So Crumbs is in the area right Right now, they've walked into that bush. They found Scar out. The death sentence does not land. He manages to silence Scar. Oh! St. Vicious flashes over the wall, instantly gets booted away. Come on, attack goes down. The ignite is ticking. It's going to be enough to secure the kill onto Scar. First kill of the game picked up for Curse. Down in the bottom lane, Boy Boy is fighting with Cutie Pie. He's ghosted up. Ignite is available. Ignite is now down. Boy Boy has basically 1v1 Cutie Pie. He flashes over the wall and does get to safety. So you see right there the difference between our two summoner spells, Flash and Ghost. Ghost is better for the long fight. Boy Boy would have gotten that kill if there wasn't a wall there. But the small advantage of having Flash is that you can hop those barriers. Cutie does get out. Walls are pretty important. Third tower of the game gets dropped. Curse have secured that one without reply from their opponents. And they've kept four members of the team in the top lane. Once the True Shot Barrage clears the wave, they decide to back off. And Boy Boy does have his Stan United still up. So they have the potential to engage and change the numbers in their favors. So Curse, next use of that global ultimate is really going to be the, the starting point for this mid game and tell the rest of the story. Curse, hold on to a 2,000 gold lead as we enter this roaming mid game phase. Dignitas, without really any pressure on Curse's you know, frontline towers, we haven't seen them make any extended play to actually get a tower down. They seem content with just farming and it could just be to buy time for their carries. 
buying time for Twitch to get fed is is definitely something that they would would love to do because he's only got that Blade of the Ruin King and that's not really core for Twitch. That's that's going to help Twitch in the assassination game like you talked about stealthing up and trying to duel people with that Blade of the Ruin King, but for the team fights what he wants is the crit to come in. So they don't really want those large fights until he has that infinity edge to combo with it. It'll take him a little while to work himself towards that. He's sitting on a pickaxe right now and only 300 gold in his back pocket. He's actually behind in gold to his opponent, I'm a cutie pie, thanks to that 30 CS advantage that cutie pie has accrued over the course of the game. Dragon will be respawning in two minutes' time. That will be the third of this match. And we'll have to see if any more shenanigans happens across the map <laughs> because basically that's what happened during the previous one. Well, I, yeah, I think the shenanigans coming from Dignitas are going to be a little bit fewer and far between because Skara in that last failed gank, not only did he die, but he burned his teleport to get up there, wasted a, you know about 40 seconds, and since he was holding on to his flash, trying to use it reactively, he actually burned that one later too, and still went down. So basically, gave up ev absolutely everything you could everything give up. Everything he had. <laughs> Again, Skara Skara's has pockets, shook out all the lunch money. <laughs> and I found Voiboy got a little bit of damage, but unfortunately, after giving up all his lunch money, he doesn't have any damage to deal. And Voiboy, with that Giant's Belt and Sunfire Cape, he has amassed a massive amount of hit points, and it's just going to make his split-pushing threat ever more present for Dignitas to deal with. This is a really huge win for Curse right now. They finally regained control of their blue buff. So Jackie can spam out his abilities to, to wave clear, and he can defend a turret very effectively, which opens up the door for their split pushing strategy with that Shen. And you can see that not only is Shen split pushing, they've left Cop in that bottom lane as well, and relying on the wave clear of Oriani in that mid lane was fend fending off about two or three members of Dignitas, but Dignitas a little afraid of their opponents. They have actually backed away from that mid lane. Afraid for good reason here, and because of the blue buff combo with the uh, the Stain United being available, uh, Curse really do get to execute the, the game plan that they were looking for. Viewers at home have to remember that Shen in itself is not a split pushing comp. There are two main parts to split pushing. Not only do you have to have a, either a strong duelist or a global, but you also have to have someone that's with the rest of your team who's defending being amazing wave clear so that your opponent's team can't just shove down a different objective. And that's the key right there. Jackie with the blue buff is doing that for his team. Right now you can see Curse have started off the Dragon and has respawned. There are members of Dignitas around and they are very, very mobile. You can't count them out. Dragon is going very quickly and Dignitas, they basically give that one up without even so much as peeking the eyes around the corner. Well, they had a couple people buy in there. Cutie Pie could not make it all the way from the fountain and there was no way that Dignitas could actually force that one. Jackie does take a bit of a harass though, there's the flash! They do want to force that fight though, Stand United gets used, that was Skara diving over the wall, sets it up for Kiwi Kid to throw himself forward, puts on that ultimate and massacre, now Skara's gonna jump onto Edwards, here comes Patoy, the Blades of Torment miss, fierce and drains away, Edwards a second to fall, Crowstorm comes in and the Kakors break up St. Vicious' HP bar, five members of Dignitas secure three kills and a mid lane tower. That's the most satisfying counter to Shen, is just burning down the target that gets shielded, so that the Shen never even arrives and he stays up there split pushing, but there's no way that a single Shen with a Sunfire kit can outpush a five man team. They've got the second tower of the game. Dignitas continue to focus their eyes on the next tower. They're onto the inhibitor turret. Spray and Pray is available for Cop, and if he's gonna save this, it's gonna be a lot of work. Oh, Skara dive forward. Hits. Command Protect is on. Now they're trying to get onto Skara as he's flashing away from safety, but three towers in a row for Dignitas. That is the bonus of taking all champions with jump. Like we talked about in the champion select here, everyone on Dignitas can gap close. So they'll catch you out of position if you if you are even in a spot that you think is safe. Comboing their gap closer with a flash means that they just got Jackie and two turrets. Such a great play coming out of Dignitas. Really showing that they don't have to be reactive in order to make objectives work in their favor. They're still only 300 gold behind their opponents, though. <laughs> and basically, it's just a CS advantage in favor of Curse for the most part. And that's Boy Boy being diligent up there. He, he's slow and steady, wins the race. He did finally get that top turret. So he was able to answer one of them. But it does not compare to having an exposed inhibitor. Whenever your inhibitor turrets go down, it's going to make you second guess yourself for the entire rest of the game. Wow, that was so close to a <laughs> big golem. 
uh, steal right there. Almost making that one from under Cop's nose, but does manage to just, just, just miss by the skin of his teeth. It does look like Curse feeling a little flustered right now in comparison to the two previous games we've seen from them this weekend, when they were basically in control. Even when being aggressed upon by CLG, Curse had the answer. They knew what to do. Right now, they're flustered. They're looking for what to do to handle this Dignitas mobile composition. Yeah, well, the reason is that not very many teams will play compositions like this that all have so many dashes and can catch you off guard like that. Jackie was not expecting to get Flash Dark Flight tid upon. <laughs> <laughs> Knocked up <laughs> in the air. Dark flown upon. <laughs> Dark flown upon by Aatrox. And we'll see whether or not Kiwi Kid can make that work in his favor. We've only seen his Bloodwell work once for him and it's actually saved his life. As the member of the LCS with the most deaths in NA right now, he's putting on a good performance in his second matchup with Aatrox. And I guess it's what they need to do. He's modified his build a little bit, modified the composition around it, and they're making it work. I, how long is it going to take for Dignitas to realize here, oh, wait, we forgot they've got Shen, and he's still split pushing. He's getting all this damage onto our outer turrets. He's slowly going to be destroying building after building if they keep waiting there with their five-man team in full vision of Curse. Dignitas have decided to respond. They're stealing away the Wraith camp right now on the minimap, and you can see that Void Boy's Trying to get himself to a safe position. He's warded up Dignitas' blue to get a little bit of early warning from his opponents. And he should be able to make it up before anybody catches him. Yeah, Patoy is headed right for that tri-bush, but both of them a little bit too late to discover the ninja waiting in the shadows. Well, this blue buff that's just respawned, this will only be the second blue buff of the game that Nijak has been able to secure for himself. Well, Skara is sniffing around, thinking about going for the steal. True shot barrage. <clears throat> comes out, does not manage to land it. Curse are really waiting for that Infinity Edge right now. They want Cop to be able to finish that one. He's got only got 400 gold right now, though. So it's going to be uh, another couple waves of him trying to farm up. Meanwhile, Boy Boy does get caught out. So we see Patoy coming in as well. The Blade of the Rune King active gets thrown down to slow Boy Boy. He ghosts up to do the best he can to get away from this. Patoy so badly wants to get that fear down, but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to chase him. That is one speedy, speedy ninja, <laughs> and he manages to run away. Again, the difference between the Ghost and the Flash. Not only does Ghost come up much quicker, but if Boy Boy was running Flash in that situation, they would have kept chasing and they would have caught him. Clear focus from Curse, you know, signaling what they wanted to do with that split pushing Shen. You can see the death sentence flies up. Stand it going Doesn't in manage that to go on. We do see the Saint Fishers jumps forward. The shockwave only pulls Kiwi Kid in. No one else was hit by it. Crumbs is the first target. He's gonna go down. Thanks to Saint Fisher jumping right back on top of him. Close storm comes up from Patoy as on the side. Void Boy and Saint Fishers are trying to do the best they can to focus the carries, but they've only got the jungler down. Void Boy gets feared, runs the opposite direction. Ignite's gonna be enough to pick up a kill now onto Patoy. Void Boy's going to fall eventually. No, the shield is enough to save him. St. Vicious forced to flash away. Down to about 50 HP. Continues on the retreat at 3 for 3. 3 for 2. Kiwi Kid showing the power of Bloodwell right there. He was the one tanking the turret as Aatrox because he had the confidence of the tower aggro switch after he does go down there first time that he'll be able to, to tank out the first few hits. And a great job by Dignitas managing that tower aggro. It's very, very slight win, but the taking down the turret is even bigger than coming out with one extra kill. Not only do they get the tower, in 10 seconds time the dragon's gonna be respawning. You can see that both Kiwi Kid and Cutie Pie are well aware of the timing and they're positioning themselves to take themselves a dragon as well. There's a couple of flashy moves right there. They should be able to burst this one down too because Kiwi Kid has a Blade of the Rune King and a Last Whisper. He's been building almost all offensive with his build here. And it's definitely working in his favor, 2-0-5. All that 95% kill participation in this particular matchup. No death to his name. Score is mirrored by Cutie Pie as they try to put some damage down this blue buff. It does look like Curse are going to be able to at least invade and take this one away from Dig. Again, this is one of the reasons why I love bringing a lot of crowd control and focusing it on Aatrox. Whenever I'm playing against that champion, it's very, very difficult if you allow him to freely auto attack, then he puts out so much damage with the rest of your team that he will destroy you from the inside out. It's a very, very scary threat team from Dignitas right now as they've got damage all the way down the line. Even that support fiddle, if you ignore him for long enough, will drain you dry. Right now though, Curse are just trying to respond as best as they can. The F-Sword pickaxe has been completed by Cop, but he's taking a very long time to complete his next major item. Still no IE in sight. 
Let's see how much. He's only got, yeah, 780 gold left there. So he's going to want to be funneled a little bit more of this farm. As you can see, St. Vicious is trying to protect him to let him get the safe minion hits, last minion hits here, so he can actually finish that IE. We'll have to see how quickly he can generate it. He's 60 creeps behind his opponent right now. I'm a cutie pie is just doing phenomenally well with this modified blue build Israel. It's those blue items, but it's a non-traditional build order. We do tend to see slightly different ones down the line. We'll see what the vamp set, uh, scepter eventually gets built up into. The ward on the red buff, and he gets it! So blue red buff is stolen away thanks to the true shot barrage. Saint Vicious is going to pick up fight. Death sentence pulls Patoy backwards. The box goes down. That's going to be zone control as the shockwave pulls Crumbs and Kiwi Kid back. They trade it back and forth, but the AD carry for Dignitas is still alive. This fight is going so well in favor of Dignitas. They've dropped all of the carries from Curse, and the tanky Voy Boy is just trying to get away. The snock ups and the slows are not going to be enough to hold him in place, but Dignitas, they lost their support for four kills. That's the lack of vision right there for Curse. The fact that they the Oracles had run out, so Edward couldn't get there to clear the red buff, and not only was that a great steal there from Ezreal, but a great follow-up from all of these gap-closing champions that they ran. We'll have to see how well Curse can respond to this one. They've got super minions now funneling into their base, and will be there for the next couple of minutes while the rest of Dignitas have Rush themselves over to the Baron Pit. There's no teleport available for Curse. And you can see Void Boy doing the best he can to get up there. Baron's down to 3,000 HP, and it looks like they should be able to pick this one up. Void Boy, if he gets a lucky taunt, may be able to pick up extra frag. But he's got to be very careful. He does have to be careful because the blue buff, or the red buff, blue Ezreal, is so hard to get away from if you do get close to him. One tag from him, he and he can almost keep you permaslowed. Managed to get away with that one. And Dignitas now 7,000 gold ahead and inhibited down from their opponents. They've got a Baron buff secured. They're in the driving seat. They're setting the tempo and they're in charge of who goes where in this matchup. Oh, they set a very fast tempo for this one, too. And I don't think that they're going to turn it down anytime soon. All they have to do is have Kiwi Kid uh, heal up back at the fountain and then they can push in for the next dive on with Baron buff on them. They can go with Kiwi Kid once again, tanking that turret early because he can rely on the Bloodwell revive, which is back up again. It's going to be even scarier when you consider that he's building some tanky items now as well. Randian's Omen has just been completed, so all of that armor and HP he's to help... 100% thinking tower dive. <laughs> it's going to be a terrifying prospect to deal with for Curse. And, you know, if, if Cop gets caught out or locked up at all, their damage doesn't run much deeper than that. You've got Sinza that can offer some, and mm -hmm. of course the burst from Nijaki, but there's a lot of pressure on Cop right now. And the damage that Curse have besides Cop is, is vulnerable to being kited there. Uh, St. Vicious and Boy Boy, uh, they can be slowed down by this very mobile comp that Dignitas are running. It works so well when you run that blue Ezreal and you lay those AoE slow fields all over the map. It just turns the battlefield into a basically a minefield that Curse have to navigate around. We'll see if they've managed to find any of those metal detectors that'll help them get in and out of that minefield. As Dignitas secure the seventh tower of the game and continuing to focus on this top lane. They're down to the inhibitor turret and they're looking to try and basically pull numbers away. You were talking about how Skara was going to be the one that needs to control Boy Boy's split push and he's down in this bottom lane trying to keep the lane pushed against Boy Boy Shen. Yeah, he can definitely keep that one under control but he can't get tower damage. So all he can really do is keep Void Boy pinned there and then throw out the silence from his Null Sphere as soon as Void Boy tries to stand united. One of the things that does work in his favor is he can just rift walk over the wall and join the rest of his team to focus on this tower. You've got Kiwi Kid and Skara from the side and they've got to be a little bit careful even though they've both got jumps. They do get locked down at all. It could be scary position to be in. And you have to watch out for the Fiddle Six ulti too. If you can keep an eye on Patoy, See where he comes in from. The death sentence comes in. Scar has been immediately caught. He's going to pop that Seraph's Embrace shield. Tries to get to safety. Riftwalk is going to put distance between them as the Crow Storm comes in. Oh! That's a three-man shockwave pulling Dignitas together. The blood well has been popped, and they're going to try to focus down Kiwi Kid. He's going to fly himself out. Not going to be enough distance, though. And this is a fight that Curse have done perfectly. So 
poorly played of a team fight right there for Ding Toss. They got baited very deep into Curse's base, so they were not only taking that inhibitor turret, but also the Nexus turrets there. Scara teleports back in to keep up the pressure on the top turret, though, and they may still get this one. Scar is using that teleport as a sightseeing tool. Teleports in and hangs around and chills out because, yes, it got him closer, but he hasn't taken advantage of it. Cutie Pie was in the mid lane. They can't focus damage on that top lane tower. And basically, they're just trying to keep the minions inside of Curse's base. They were able to keep the vision in there and get a few more hits on the turret, but it was definitely not worth it because they couldn't finish it off. Having lost two members already, Curse are in their base. They can just heal back up. So five members strong, three of whom already have home guards, means that Dignitas can't pull up on that aggression, and they just dove a little too deep there. Dignitas is going to back this one out a little bit, try to focus down the dragon, and secure that one for themselves. No you know, uh, attention from their opponents to make that any more difficult. It's the third of the game for them. They got a 7,000 gold lead, but now that Curse has super minions still down the mid lane and those minions with additional HP in the side lanes, it buys them some time to farm up and helps Cop get closer to some bigger items. He's finally got that Infinity Edge. If there's one uh, message that we got from watching the North American LCS, there's a warning to all the teams to not get overconfident around this 30 minute mark. Because if you overextend like that and you give back the the small pieces of the gold lead, then any team right now actually does have the possibility of turning them around. We've seen so many comebacks from even bigger deficits than this. One thing that we do also have to highlight is that fact that that whole previous fight started from Edward landing the death sentence onto Skara. The two tugs on that chain and even Skara's rift walk wasn't powerful enough for it to be super impactful at the beginning of the game. It was four star. Red buff stolen away here from Dignitas. They're denying the objectives in a lot of buff steals. And we're doing the best that he can to maintain some ring of vision and information, at least on the outskirts of the curse base. Yeah, on the bright side for Dignitas, that's hard to recreate. Landing that death sentence on Ascara uh, is a very hard thing to recreate if now Dignitas are aware of the positioning and they don't get, uh, you know, overextended and come in on two different sides of that turret. So oh, is now. Saint, though, he's got people all over him. He's in a little bit of trouble. The Sonic Wave does land. Command Protect goes down. They're going to slow him out. Stand United has been channeled from Void Boy. He may be able to make it. He lands. He taunts up Cutie Pie. He's held back Skara as well. Now, Nijak is being focused. The Shockwave has been blown. Cop is nowhere near this fight, though. Him and Edward are miles away. Three members of Curse of Down, and it's going to be on Cop and Edward to try and defend this base. Okay, second warning for this game is don't go farming wraiths if you don't have control of your own jungle there. Saint Vicious. Risking so much for so little there. It ends up resulting in him losing a tower. Two inhibitors. There's 20 seconds on the clock before St. Vicious is alive again. Dignitas is going to try put some focus onto this Nexus turret. Cutie Pie is just completely ignoring everybody. Cop gets knocked into the air and decimated underneath his Nexus. In the background, Edward gets taken out as Dignitas are going to close this one out. Nexus turret one, Nexus turret two. Well played, Dignitas. Congratulations to Dignitas. Cop there just got assassinated by the two solo laners. Beautiful combo and well-deserved win for Dig. It's a very good positioning and control throughout that game. Using that very mobile composition of theirs to their advantage and basically managing to pick up their first victory of the weekend, taking Curse down, preventing their first 3-0 week. Couple of... <laughs> Beauty Pie is so upbeat right now. Definitely excited about that one. 5 0 11 on that Ezreal. The only member of uh, Dignita to die more than once was Patoy. And I figure when you're a fiddlesticks throwing yourself into the enemy mm -hmm. team, you're allowed to die a couple more times, right? You're, you're, yep, you get a green card for that. You're so, on the go. Cutie Pie, though, I'm not surprised that he's super happy after that. He said, and a lot of people agree with him, Blue Ezreal. Whatever your opinion on the build, once you complete it, is one of the most fun things to play as in League of Legends. And he stated that several times, and he didn't die at all either, so that always is going to mean you're having a good time. Yeah, especially when you're con so in control of the tempo of that matchup. It's a composition that we've seen from Dignitas. They've definitely shown they're willing to play different champs, willing to play slightly uh, more niche types <laughs> of picks, and it worked out for them. I love that we do have teams still stepping outside of the comfort zone and bringing in the new champions. You're always wondering who's going to be the first to pick up uh, the new champions. And so over in Europe, you guys got Gambit. They're not afraid of always picking up uh, the new champions as soon as they have them. And here we've got Dignitas. Well played to Dig. We've got to take a short break.